Hey guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. Today we're going to be talking about chasing our dreams. And I have Miss Sharika Phillip here of Lucky 23 Blog. You want to Hi. Hi, how are you guys? Nice to meet you. Awesome, awesome. So Sharika is a blogger and she has really great recipes on her website as well. Do you want us to tell us a little bit about your brand and what you stand for? So one of the things I struggled with really hard when I turned 23 was I had no kind of purpose. I didn't feel like I had a direction. And for the longest, I felt like I had a direction up until I turned 23. Um, so, <laughs> so one of my friends who also has her own blog, she was like, you're experiencing a problem that I went through when I was in my 20s. And I know a lot of people go through as well now. So why not go ahead and open up a space for it to be talked about and then also do something that's significant to me. I love to cook, always love to cook. So that's where I decided a lot of people don't know how to cook. Let me give them easy, simple recipes. Some that are a little dirty, you know, something that's unhealthy, but some you, for the most part, I try to keep it healthy because I know it's hard to do that nowadays and especially inexpensively. So try to give those type of options. Okay, so what do you hope to give back to the world? My hope to give back to the world is you being happy and finding your own version of your happiness. For the longest, I felt like we had a cookie cutter idea with the whole picket fence and the family with the two dog home or whatever. But currently, that's not how we live. We clearly have to work a little differently than our parents did. So finding your own happiness in the route that you have to take for life would be the biggest thing I want to give back. Absolutely. I think that's so such a good point because our generation is so different and I don't know if other generations felt that way as well, but mm -hmm. I feel like we're such a unique generation that we have to do things very differently. Exactly. You're no longer willing to accept that you can't have it all. And exactly. I think what we're starting to see is millennials really fighting for the fact that I can have everything that I want. Watch me do it. Exactly. And, they, and do it in a way that's fun for you. It's no longer you just go sit at a nine to five. You, you can find your passion and make that profitable. Absolutely. So what motivates you to keep going on a day to day? Um, my biggest thing is, it's all, even though this is something for people to find their happiness, it's also a way for me to find my release. So when I'm able to write, it's not only me giving you my genuine thoughts, it's me finally seeing how I feel on paper rather than me just keeping it in my head. So that's what kind of motivates me. It keeps me kind of sane to keep writing yeah. for other people to see. Absolutely. And I definitely can relate. So when I was writing my book, it wasn't a book. It was just me getting things off of my chest mm -hmm. and it became a book eventually. But writing is such a therapeutic experience. And even if you don't have intentions on publishing a book or being a blogger or anything like that, I really hope people start writing more because it helps. It's a judgmental free space to just clear your mind and get it off of your chest and process a lot of the things that we right. do on a regular basis. And I think it helps people unpack some of that baggage that we carry around every single day without even realizing it. Exactly. I, you know, it's funny because when we were kids, we were taught to write down our feelings when you had, you know, girls had their little journals or the class, the teachers were required us to have a journal. And then when you got older, it was like, nah, I'm doing it. And now it's like, I need to go back. I need to regroup myself at how I was at a younger stage. And writing out clearly helps for me. So I hope that people find help in that as well. Absolutely. So along those lines, if you could go back and tell the teenage you something, what would it be? Go with your dream. Don't live with what you've been taught for the whole or your whole 16, 17 years of life. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you truly like. Because for the longest, I thought I was going to be an anesthesiologist. It wasn't until I was probably 18, 19 that I finally was like, yeah, this dream clearly isn't for me. And I need to find my own path. And I ended up finding it not only in my blogging and my recipes, but in the legal field. That's where I feel comfortable at. So it's kind of, it's per, it was perfect for me to find that at that point in time, but it would have been nice to know it ahead of time as well. <laughs> to say the least. So what prompted you towards the field of anesthesiology? And then what was the change agent that caused you to switch more into the legal side of things? 
Well, from a child, I always knew I wanted to be a doctor. Um, As far as the anesthesiology, my aunt is an anesthesiologist, and I looked up to her for the longest. Um, And then we, you know, when we got older, I kind of saw more what it required as a doctor. And I figured that's not really what I want in my life. That's not how I want to operate my life because doctors work life is hectic and crazy and that's not what I want for myself um what prompted me to go towards the legal field I was in I was not only in high school but I was in college when I was in high school um so one of the classes that they kind of just had us take as a a class to get to know college was an intro to criminal justice class and I loved it I didn't believe how much I was going to enjoy that class but just not only finding out that not only finding out that the legal system has, there's two sides to every story, but I found in the criminal justice field, I want to find, I, or I want to bring peace to people who don't have that and don't, and who live in a frustrated life. And that, it kind of opened me up to that idea. So that's why I ended up going towards criminal justice. Wow, that's such a, a very passionate story. And I can hear your excitement about helping people. And I think that's really, really great. Um, what projects are you working on now? Um, uh, right now I, I'm <laughs> helping, um, getting my brother into an internship that I, I really enjoyed when I was in college. Um, that internship was at a place called Life Connections, which helped children from ages 11 through 18 who were going through the criminal justice system. And they, the um, judge offered them a different route. They had a diversion program. So from that, I ended up finding my passion in helping children and parents learn how to speak to each other. Um, and also that helped me come into a great idea with you of working on our new nonprofit. Um, also, I work at the law offices of William H. Harding, which is a personal injury firm, but I enjoy it because not only am I working with my husband, I'm actually enjoying helping people who've been wronged when they get in an accident and finding their own peace with it as well. Okay. So my final official question, where do you see your dream taking you in the next five years? In the next five years, I would hope that my blog is not only just with the, you know, the friends and family that I have around me, but I actually find a bigger audience so that I'm able to expose people to a happy, healthy lifestyle um, in their 20s. And then also, I would like to see um, my or help my husband with growing his brand as well as an attorney, um, because that clearly is what he's gone to school for a long time for. So we need to also build him up too, because it's not just me and my relationship, it's me and my husband working together. Okay, any last minute final thoughts for us? No, I appreciate you for having me on your channel. I, it's an amazing honor, but I know that you're working hard and showing people how to be financially responsible and be a business person for themselves. So I appreciate you for that, for bringing something like that to the black community because it's not something we've had before. Absolutely, absolutely. That's one of the things that I'm passionate about is not only just the financial experiences, but making sure that as a community we're whole. Um, so that's dealing with our baggage, dealing mm -hmm. with the emotional scars, um, and growing and developing into who we want to be. Because a lot of times we've been sold a dream that you go to college, you get a job, you have a family, and you just coast through the rest of life. But what about the people who have those dreams of being an entrepreneur or who have dreams of giving back to their community? Like what happens then? And so that's why I want to do these types of interviews where people are showing different dreams and different diverse perspectives because it really and truly makes a difference to see somebody who looks like you, who's doing what you want to do. Exactly. We did. I don't feel like we had enough examples when we were kids, but I want to make sure by the time our generation of kids grow up, right. they have plenty of examples to, to look back on. Absolutely. I think that's so critical. Representation absolutely <laughs> matters, to say the least. Um, and actually along the lines of representation. So um, I coach cheerleading. And for Christmas, I got my team, I coached the little team, and I got them dolls for Christmas. Do you know how difficult it was to find a black doll? Girl, I've never seen one in a Target. I have never seen one. So there's four girls on the team, 
I was able to find three in Walmart. And I was like, here's the part that really pissed me off. Pocahontas, who was a Native American, Mm -hmm. looked white. So then you're going to whitewash the one. And here's the funny part. The doll was white next to her regular colored picture. And I was just like, this is why representation matters. Exactly. Today, I want to be able to give, and I remember my sister asking me, like, does it really, like, does it matter that the doll is black? And for me, it did matter because I recognized that dolls are a symbol of beauty. And what I didn't want to communicate was the only beautiful examples that exist are white. Exactly. And my and my parents were always like that. I had they made I know it was even harder for them twenty years ago. Right. But all of our dolls, all of my dolls were black. All of them were or black or Native American. And they made sure that they made that I could see it not only in myself, but they. I know you've talked about colorism before, mm-hmm. but they even made sure that they got my skin tone just so I could identify with whatever doll I had. Because you know I know the perspective on life can change based off of how you are perceived with your, the color of your skin. So I I love the idea that they're finally doing more, but it's still not enough to represent. Exactly. Exactly. So this doing these chasing your dream videos is my way of saying, Hey, there are people of color out here doing amazing things. And that's really where it came from because I realized I was like, I know some really productive people who are doing amazing things in this world. And I want to highlight that because I think the world deserves to know that people oh, yeah. are phenomenal. Exactly. And people of the millennial generation are as well. Cause we get, we get a lot of flag, but we, we I feel do. like we're doing something. <laughs> we absolutely do. And I really question why the millennials are written as hard as we are when really and truly the things that we're criticized for are not our fault. Mm-mm. The, the debts and the, how far our country's gone, not our fault. We were already, we were only kids. And the funniest thing is the, the one generation who criticizes us the most is the generation that raised us. So I'm like, exactly. Had a conversation with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But even beyond all the criticism, I think we're doing really, really great. And I think the biggest criticism I hear is the delay in which we're doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, I think we're taking half a step back so we can take three steps forward and go beyond where the next, the previous generation went and twice where the the generation before that went. And so we're, we're taking a little bit longer to do things like get married or have kids because we're focusing on our careers, because we're focusing on financial freedom. We're focusing on getting out of debt. We have a solidified background. Hello. So, um, you know, it's just a different set of priorities, but unfortunately a lot of times different looks like wrong Mm -hmm. and it's not the case it's really just different exactly all right well thank you so much for sharing your dream with us i look forward to hearing all of the comments of everyone um if you would like to share your dream comment below we can make this happen i want to put it out there for everyone um to understand that the dream can look very very different for everyone and kind of just going from there so sharika thank you so much for being a part of this if anyone is interested please go to her blog lucky23blog.com um the number 23 not not written down exactly (laughs) (laughs) but make sure you download some of her recipes comment to her let her know how i taste it if you got it right you can get it right exactly i promise you if you need to impress someone it's the way to go there's plenty of options for you (laughs) so let us know where to find you on social media um i'm uh, i am underscore lucky 23 on instagram and then also the same on twitter um and then on facebook you just look up my name sharika phillip and you'll be able to see me as well all right sharika thank you so much for having us Um, thank you next time thank you for bringing me on have a good day